Hey guys, I'm Daisho, and I am here bringing you guys some Hearthstone, and I'm actually not doing a live commentary right now. I'm actually going to be talking about balance, and just some gameplay in the background, hopefully. I haven't recorded it yet, so I don't know what it's of, so sorry about that. Anyway, balance. So, for a Hearthstone, I guess the I can only talk about what's been going on since I started playing. So, when I started playing, it was before the previous patch. So like, there was patch number one where they nerfed Twilight Drake and Rogue and stuff like that. Um, so I didn't play before that, and I didn't play until almost, I guess I played most of my time before the second patch, patch number two. But anyway, so in patch number two, they nerfed Starving Buzzard, Shattered Sun Cleric, Argent Commander, Flame Imp, and Unleash the Hounds. Or they changed Unleash the Hounds, they didn't really nerf it. And uh, of those, I think I agree with most of them. I mean, the aggressive decks were completely ruling the format. Oh, and mind control, sorry. Um, the aggressive decks were completely ruling the format. And so Shattered Sun and Argent Commander, like, yeah, Argent Commander was just by far the best rare. So nerfing it makes a lot of sense. And then Shattered Sun Cleric was just by far the best three drop common. So, I mean, sure, you have to have one card that is the best three drop common. But at the same time, I mean, when you're pigeonholed into playing these decks because these two cards are so much superior to all of the other options then that doesn't really make for a fun trading card game or collectible card game experience and i really understand why they nerfed those mind control was kind of the same thing i was listening to do, to a developer talk about that and he was basically saying how mind control allowed you to take what your opponent was doing that was fun and make it your own. Basically use it against them. And sure, that can be fun for you, but that that is not what they're trying to accomplish with this game. They're trying to allow you to do cool and interesting things, and then Mind Control kind of completely takes that away. And at 8 mana, you really can't do anything impressive, or a lot of the times you can't do anything that impressive uh, before it turns 7 or whatever, so you get to use your creature once, and then they just start taking it. So. The fact that they turned that into 10 and then they also made it so that basically that's the only thing you can do that turn. I think that makes sense. And it didn't really impact mind control too much. It made Priest a little bit worse, but the fact still is that mind control is a very powerful card. And they changed it from being an absurdly powerful card to still a good card, but you kind of need some other tools to get you to the point where you can even cast that card. So mind control, I'm really not too upset that they that they nerfed it, and not just because I didn't like playing against it, um, just because I think that it made it a more fair card and uh, made it a better experience for everybody in playing the game. As for Unleash the Hounds, when I originally heard that they were going to nerf it, I was really confused because that deck didn't seem that powerful. I mean, it lasted for a short time, I think, in Standard, where there was a, or Constructed, where there was a lot of people playing it. There were a lot of people playing it, but then, by the time I started playing a lot of Constructed, nobody was touching Unleash the Hounds, and, I mean, the one-turn kill deck just wasn't that powerful. So, like, occasionally you'd run into somebody who was trying to do it, but often enough you would just be able to kill them, especially if you're playing one of the aggro decks that were so popular. You could just kill them before they had time to go off, and, I mean... Sure, so so if it's just this combo deck that isn't very powerful, why are you changing it? But the reasoning that they gave really kind of brought me to that side. So basically when you're playing this silly combo deck, it's the same thing as with Storm in Magic the Gathering, a deck that um, tries to do, it does nothing until the turn where it can make a ton of mana and then use one spell to kill your opponent. So basically it's the same thing. Um, you, you don't play any spells for the beginning of the game, and then towards the end, you just do everything. So the reason why it made sense to me that they nerfed it was, was that they were saying how it doesn't make a game of Hearthstone fun, because one person is playing their game. Their game is just to stockpile all the cards that they need to go off, and then the other person doesn't get to play Hearthstone. There's no interaction. All they're doing is just playing creatures and attacking, and that's not fun. I mean, you you want a, a real game with interaction on both sides. So the fact that they nerfed Unleash the Hounds, or they changed it to be a completely different card, that made sense to me, although it is really weak now. And, I mean, they, they claim that it... Okay, first of all, flavor-wise, it's very good. I mean, the fact that when you unleash the hounds, all of a sudden you get these little puppies who have haste and they start murdering your opponent's creatures. That's cool. But the for every creature your opponent controls doesn't really make any sense. Um, I, I guess that they, like, would three have been too good or too bad? I don't know. 
I, I guess the the number that you get is the part that bugs me a little bit, just because of the fact that you're only going to get as many as they have. So if they have more creatures than you, or like if you both have like four creatures, then you only get three or something like that. I don't know. But then if you trade one of your creatures off to kill them, then you, you still only get three. I don't know. And then they all have to be X ones for it to be good. They were trying to say that it, it sort of helps with Hunter's lack of being able to deal area of effect damage because you can do this and basically just use it as a really bad arcane explosion where you can sometimes mix, mix and match and kill uh, an X2 and instead of one of the X1s or something like that. I don't know. So, I mean, it, it's okay, it's not the worst card ever, but the point is that they changed the, the card so it was a more fun experience for everyone. It's not that the card needed to be balanced just because it was so powerful but it did provide this kind of effect that made it unenjoyable to play the game and uh i think i covered all of the main changes to the for oh flame imp they really that was just a really really minor change because they noticed that warlock was the main aggro deck that people were playing and they didn't want to take aggro out of the format but they did probably want to diversify um what you have to play so like if um, if Warlock just has this one one drop that is way more powerful than everybody else's one drops, then you're gonna play Warlock because one drop is one of the most important plays of the game, especially if you're on the play. If you can get a good one drop out, then you're probably gonna win. But anyway, continuing back to so Flame Imp, they just made a very minor buff dealing three damage instead of two, and that wasn't such a big deal. I don't think anybody um, is really too up in arms about that one, but it does make Warlock a slight bit worse, and if you're playing another aggro deck against Warlock, that extra damage, if they cast two of them, two extra damage over the course of the game could definitely um, be the difference between winning and losing in a significant portion of games. I mean, obviously it's not going to happen every time, but over thousands of games, it will matter a good portion of them. So there's that. And then finally, the change that I just can't really comprehend, and I, I don't know, it, it seems like it's one of those changes that was made just by looking at numbers, mm. and not really one where they thought about it, and if they had, they may have come to a different conclusion, but that's Starving Buzzard. They made Starving Buzzard from a 2-2 into a 2-1, and one thing that I did hear from some developers was that Starving Buzzard, and specifically the Beast deck, was a lot better against like mage druid and rogue which all have really easy ways to deal with x ones but what i don't know if they considered is the fact that hunter was only ever applicable when you were playing the one turn kill build so when you take out the one turn kill build then the other cards don't matter so you don't need to nerf starving buzzard because you already completely neutralized that deck if anything by neutralizing that deck you need to buff some other cards for Hunter just so that they can still be viable because that was really the only way that they could be viable. And everything else that I've been saying is that they want you to be able to do whatever you want in the game. And by nerfing Starving Buzzard, it basically makes it almost impossible to use, especially because now like the best way to use Starving Buzzard is to like get a combo off. So if you have a snake trap or if you get a good unleash the hounds off, then you can get some real value out of Starving Buzzard. And for that to happen, you either have to have a lot of mana or like two extra mana whenever you want to do something, or you have to play it a turn earlier. But now against Rogue, Paladin, um, Druid, and Mage, you just cannot play your Starving Buzzards out. So I think that they really, uh, they really overlooked that one, the fact that they were completely nerfing the deck anyway, and it really shows. I mean, Hunter was already my worst class in the arena, and there was like no way that I was ever thinking of running a Hunter deck in Constructed, and now that they nerfed Starving Buzzard, which was one of the premier cards in the deck, it just, it doesn't seem like it's something that can ever possibly be imaginable to me that somebody would play a Hunter deck, and I mean, it's significant, statistically significantly, my Hunter deck is statistically significantly worse than all of my other decks, so that one I was really, really confused about. So I'm not exactly sure why they did nerf that. Now, um, so that was that was the patch number two. That was the big patch um, that they were working on for a while and they finally decided to release. And now, a couple days later, it's less than a week later, I think, or maybe one week later, um, they come out with this new patch where they are nerfing all the freeze cards from Mage. And I have mixed feelings about this. Number one, Mage was completely and utterly awful to play against. With the freeze mechanic and ice block, your opponent was basically 
able to stop you from ever attacking without killing your creatures. And that just doesn't make it fun to play a game. I mean, when you're playing a game and your cards don't do what they say they do because your opponent's cards say, no, you can't do that. I don't know, it just makes for an experience that you feel completely helpless and you d it doesn't want to make you want to play. I mean, that was basically the most frustrated I've gotten playing a game for a very long time. And maybe since Call of Duty. Oh, <gasps> gasp. I know, it's crazy. But anyway... Uh, yeah, so that's that happened. Mages were really awful to play against. That being said, I played against a deck today. I was using the mage deck before they nerfed it. it they nerfed it earlier today. And my opponent was rocking a uh, uh, Arcane Golem, which is a 4-2 charge, and a Leroy Jenkins. 6-2 charge makes two 1-1s one for your opponent. So basically what people started to do was build these decks that have a lot of reach. And um, so you deal as much early damage as you can before they start freezing your guys. Then you just start playing a bunch of charge guys. And um, I was playing a deck earlier with the same idea in mind where I was playing Assassin's Blade um, and Deadly Poison and Spiteful Smith. So all those things can help me get to like have my one weapon do like 15 to 20 damage to them and, o over the course of a bunch of turns. Another one of the games that I lost, my opponent doom hammered me to death. And, uh, yeah, that was another way that my opponent, like, that's, if you think about it, that's 16 points of damage over four turns. So, um, all you really need to do is get your opponent in range, and then you can just burn them out. And sometimes Ice Block still hurts, but, um, it makes it, so basically what I'm trying to say is that the, they were, people were starting to figure out ways to play around the Frost Mages, and... It was working. So, like, once everybody is packing an anti-frost mage deck, then the metagame will shift, and people are not going to play playing the frost mages decks, but they're all going to be playing the anti-frost mages decks. And then, once everybody sees that all the decks are anti-frost mage, and somebody's going to build an aggro deck that can beat those, and you know, so the metagame will shift. So. I was actually, I mean, I was definitely already starting to see that. Uh, even just druid decks playing much bigger creatures that have much more powerful effects on the board. Um, those are also pretty good against the mages. People were playing healing touch, three mana gain, eight life. So there was definitely a bunch of tools that people could use to combat these mages, which is probably um, why all these abilities were given to people at the beginning. So it sort of looked like the game was about to balance itself out. And then they changed it again. And the thing that I, I mean, I don't really have too much of an issue with them changing this. I understand that the game is in beta and there are going to be changes to it. We're just basically their, their testing crew trying to make the game perfect for when they actually release it. And that makes perfect sense to me that, that they would um, make as many changes as possible to try and get things perfect. But, I mean, when you get to the point where it's already starting to balance itself out, then you don't really need to change it. That being said, Freeze was a really awful mechanic to play against. So the changes that they made were they made all the Freeze cards, Frost Nova, or not all of them, but all of the mass Freeze cards, Frost Nova, Cone of Cold, Blizzard, they made them all, ca ca uh, they made them all cost one more crystal. Cost crystal. I don't know. For some, re um, <clears throat> for some reason that, that screwed me up. Anyway, so the freeze mechanic just gets a lot, um, a lot worse when it costs an entire mana extra to play because your opponents can do things one turn quicker or like they can do things for one more turn before they get frozen. So that definitely really helps and people can't like, you can't do on turn 10 Ragnaros Frost Nova in the same turn unless you have the coin still. So that is definitely something <clears throat> interesting and very, very relevant. So I'm pretty happy that they did make the change. I, w right after they made the change, I started playing my aggro priest deck and I was doing incredibly well. I've, I've lost like one one game out of 10 or something like that with that deck. I'm um, just ranking up really fastly, really fastly. Okay, I meant to say really quick. And then when I was gonna say that, I was like, oh wait, I should say really fast instead. And then my brain didn't think quickly enough. See, I use the word, and, and I ended up saying fastly. But anyway, um, I was able to rank up really quickly, and it was uh, it was fun. I didn't have to worry about the mage deck because I didn't see anybody. I haven't seen anybody playing it since then, and there was just a lot of diversity. I saw all sorts of decks. So anyway, that's going to be my talk about Hearthstone balancing. Um, I guess I can briefly address the patch change to um, 
the arena to give you 12 wins instead of just um, nine. And at first, I, I'm not sure if I love it because, all right, so what used to be able to happen is if you got nine, then you profited like 30 to 50 gold. Um, and then if you got eight, you profited like 50 to 100 gold. Um, maybe a little bit more sometimes, but so basically if you got eight then you would just retire and then if you wanted gold if you wanted cards then you would just um, You would play out your last game because you usually get either a second pack or a, or a gold card or whatever Anyway, not the point the point is that um, it was pretty hard to go infinite because you had to get seven or greater in everything and um, if you didn't get eight, then you barely even profited. So if if you got like one one where you win every single game, and then one where you go like five and three or whatever, then you won't be able to do a third draft. But now what they do is they give you a lot more gold. Like today I did one, I got five. It was the worst. I'm not gonna get into it. But anyway, um, I got five wins, and I got almost. I think I got 105 gold from that. So that's almost enough to do another one. I just need to complete a daily challenge, and I really like the fact that they um, do that, but at the same time, when you get eight, you get like 160 gold now. So it's a lot different in that um, in that respect. And I did get um, I did get 12. The one time I got 12, it was only like 200 gold, or 215 gold or something like that, so I was really sad. But anyway, so I do like the arena changes. It makes it a lot easier to go infinite and uh, never have to pay in, which is pretty ideal for me, because I have no, uh, no desire to pay into that. But anyway, I really appreciate you guys listening to this video. My voice has gotten progressively less unraspy, and, or progressively more raspy, as a normal human being would say. So I guess it's time for me to stop talking. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye. One last thing that I wanted to include that I just posted on my Facebook status and nobody has gotten it yet. But I do have a little piece of trivia. What is the most damage a priest can do with its hero power in one turn? Please figure that out and leave it in the comments section below. It'll be uh, it's a lot more difficult and confusing than you would think. So, yeah, hopefully somebody can figure that out. Anyway, thanks for listening. Have a nice day. Bye.